Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I am uh, Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams, uh, and I'm here with members of the community of Brooklyn, not only the members of uh, the Hasidic community, uh, but the members of the borough we call Brooklyn. We believe in the concept of one borough. And when we lose a member of this borough, we join in unison of voicing our concern and our outrage over a loss. I spent 22 years as a police officer, uh, retiring in the rank of the captain. And one crime that stands out among all crimes is the crime of homicide or murder. It's not a crime you should take lightly. It's not a crime that a victim can return from. And so, in a united voice, we are calling on all Brooklynites and New Yorkers to assist the police department in any way possible to find the individuals who are responsible for this crime. We also are announcing a $10,000 reward for any information that will lead to the arrest and conviction of the individuals who are responsible. And we're also calling on responsible journalism. We woke up this morning fresh after the announcement of the victim's body was found on Long Island to read in the paper a comment of this magnitude. Who did not want him dead? We didn't. That's right. His children did not want him dead. The residents of this city did not want him dead. We are clear that it's wrong. And most important, his son did not want him dead. We expect more from the papers and the journalists in our city. We expect that as a family sits shiver, that we do not post the photos and pictures of a victim of a homicide and a murder. And I hear those who state, well, what type of landlord was he? What type of an owner of a building was he? In America, if you are a bad landlord, you go to housing court, not the morgue. There is no justifiable means of taking the life of an individual in America. And that's why we are here today. We're here today to ask the New York Post to immediately print an apology, not only to Brooklynites, but to the eight children that are left without a dad, to the wife who's left without a husband. That is who the apology should go to for children to wake up and see something like this, their family member on the front pages of a paper asking a question, who didn't want him dead? We need to straighten that question mark into an exclamation point and say, no Brooklynite, no New Yorker, no American want him dead. That is why we're here today in a unified voice that this is unacceptable. And we're asking the paper to release an apology because we expect more from any daily tabloid in the city. And again, as a member of the New York City Police Department for 22 years, I know the pain that family members go through when a loved one is a victim of any type of crime. And that is compounded and magnified a hundred times over when that crime is listed at the highest level of intrusion on a family, and that's murder or homicide. And so I'm going to ask uh, my colleagues in government who joined me here today, uh, also voicing their concern over this matter, I'm going to ask them to come forward and say a few words. Um, the first is Council Member uh, Laurie Cumbo. Thank you. 
I want to thank Borough President Eric Adams for convening and joining us all together here today in Borough Hall. And it's so indicative of what type of Borough President Eric Adams will be that he has opened Borough Hall today for something that is so important to the fiber of Brooklyn, New York. This is very emotional to actually see the cover of this newspaper and to internalize what a family might go through when seeing this on the front cover of a newspaper. And to, to go off script in a way, we all very much in this world have a responsibility to make the world that we inhabit a better place, to make it a more vibrant, safe, intellectually expanding opportunity for the next generations coming up behind us. We all have a responsibility to leave this world far better than we found it. And when we see articles like this and so many others that have been, been written in the New York Post, we have to ask ourselves, how is this particular publication promoting the values of a better society? How are they making the world a better place? How are they expanding the minds of our young people and our children, each and every one of us, to live in harmony, to have an understanding of each other and each other's culture? This is really a very tragic day that this paper has come out. And in this new administration, moving forward, we have the opportunity to build a better New York City. And that doesn't only happen politically. That happens when all areas of government, of the press, of communities, of the police departments, of our schools, when we all come together to say that we want a better New York City that will model and be a model for so many other cities across the world, we have to question whether a paper like this has a place in our society. This is a very serious matter, the fact that this publication has come out in this way and has damaged a family, have added insult to a very serious injury, a fatal in injury that is going to take this family years to recover from and probably will never recover from. We have to work more responsibly. We have to ask our journalists to work with more responsibility to provide information to our communities that will empower them, that will inspire them. And we can no longer use tragedies as a way to sell papers. We can no longer allow the, the misfortunes of others to be utilized as a way to bring attention and resources to papers. We have to challenge ourselves, each and every one of us, to report more responsibly, to be more accurate, to be more truthful, and to allow us as a society to grow. So I stand with all of you here today. I stand with our elected leaders in asking and demanding for an apology, but also a renewed understanding of what journalism is. Everyone that works at the New York Post should come away with a body of work that they could show to their children, to their grandchildren, a body of work that they could be proud of. I don't feel that the people that are writing this and are putting this out, this is something that you can't show to your children or your grandchildren of something that you are proud of, that you participated and that you contributed to the dynamic and the intellectual brain trust of journalism today. So I ask for an apology, but I also ask for a renewed understanding of the power of journalism and to use that power wisely and to use that power to inspire the next generation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Assemblymember Lintour. Thank you, Borough President Adams. Thank you, Lori, for your very nice words. In this country, we have uh, freedom of the press. Is this freedom of the press? This is an outrage. Is that freedom? Sure it's freedom. It's freedom to do what you want and discount the fact that a man lived, a man was kidnapped, a generous man, a man who provided for his family, for his eight children and his wife, a man who gave to every community endeavor that he was ever asked, 
for. A man who lived and died for his community. Does he have faults? We all have faults. Does anybody with faults deserve this kind of treatment? I say not. And I think the people of the city, not only our community, who loved and respected this man, who donated to charity, to who failed not to give whenever he was asked to give. I don't think that this is equity or fairness or freedom. And the New York Post should be ashamed of themselves. Your Honor, I rest my case. <laughs> Thank you. Councilman Mark Frager. Thank you, Borough President Adams, and thank you to my uh, colleagues in government and to all the community leaders and those concerned here uh, who are joining us. This is outrageous and unacceptable. Mm -hmm. The press should be assisting in finding the killer mm -hmm. and not disgracing this person, his family, and his community. Where are the journalists trying to find out who is responsible for those responsible for this gruesome act? I respect freedom of the press, but where is the responsibility? As someone Wentall just mentioned, we should be working together, not dividing our city, not dividing our communities, and bringing justice to this family. His grave is still fresh. He should not be put on trial. We need to find justice for this family, justice for our communities, justice for our city. So I stand shoulder to shoulder with Menachem Stark's family, the communities, to demand justice. And I ask the press to act responsibly in helping us and helping the police department to bring those responsible to justice. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we've been joined by Councilman David Greenfield and Councilman Haim George. David? Good evening. I want to thank the wide cross section of civic, political, and community leaders who have joined us here today and the borough president, Eric Adams, for hosting us here at Borough Hall. You know, I think that New Yorkers were a jaded bunch, and we've seen a lot. And certainly, we expect insults. We expect curiosity. And we expect many bizarre things on the cover of our tabloids. But the one thing that we do not expect is to literally kick someone while they're down and to condone the murder of an innocent victim. And that's exactly what occurred in today's New York Post. Mm -hmm. Mr. Stark is a family man. He's a businessman. He's a community leader. He's respected. He's admired. He's someone who literally, just a couple of miles from here, Tears are flowing in a household full of children and parents and grandparents and nephews and nieces and brothers and sisters for the loss, a shocking loss, a heinous crime that happened in the dark of night under the cover of a snowstorm where he was kidnapped and then brutally murdered. But you wouldn't know any of this from the coverage in today's New York Post. In fact, the New York Post appears to celebrate the death of Mr. Stark. And for us, and when I say us, it's not just those of us who are Orthodox Jews, because if you look behind me, you can see that there is a cross-section of Brooklyn and New York City here behind us. For us, for all New Yorkers who have a conscience, we are disgusted 
We're outraged and we are appalled that the New York Post would dare celebrate, celebrate on their front page the murder of an innocent New Yorker. Mm -hmm. That is despicable. Even Osama bin Laden, when he made the front page of the New York Post, he, a terrorist who killed thousands of our citizens, got better treatment than a businessman, than a father, than a community leader. And that is why we are so outraged here today. We demand nothing less than a full apology on the front page by the New York Post tomorrow morning. And for the Post to glorify the murder of an innocent victim as if in some alternate reality, if you don't like someone or if you have something bad to say about someone, you could simply walk around and kidnap and murder that person is beyond disgusting. And it's outrageous and it's shameful. And so we're very much looking forward to reading tomorrow's New York Post. We're looking forward to a front page apology because anything less would be unacceptable. Thank you very much. Councilman uh, Hyam Dirt. There is no press conference, there are no press releases or tweets that can demonstrate our outrage. And when I say our outrage, it means the outrage of every single New Yorker. Journalism in New York City has today reached an unbelievable low. And I asked the New York Post, do you have no decency? A barbaric abduction and murder of a fellow human being has just taken place. A wife and eight children are in mourning. The New York Post has used this heinous crime as an occasion to declare the victim deserving of death and by its pictures identifying the, the victim as a member of our community, the Jewish community. To defame and to incite hatred against thousands of fellow New Yorkers, thousands of innocent, decent, law-abiding New Yorkers, I call on the Anti-Defamation League to protest this malicious libel. That organization was founded after just this kind of journalism led to the lynching of Leo Frank in Atlanta, Georgia, a century ago. And I call upon all communities to condone, to condemn such actions and not to condone it like the New York Post. We're all together here as one, united, and that is the way we should all be as New Yorkers. Thank you. Our public advocate, Letitia James. So yesterday, the New York Post said that they should abolish the office of public advocate. Well, let me tell you why today we need a public advocate. Because today, the New York Post reached an all-time low. Today, you've given license to murder. Today, you have condemned someone without the facts. Today, you minimized and made insignificant life. I know nothing about this gentleman, but I know that he lived and he was a human person, a human being. And clearly, no one should act as judge and jury, and clearly not the New York Post. And so I say to the New York Post, as all of my colleagues join me, that every government official should refrain from advertising in the New York Post. elected official should withdraw any governmental notice from the New York Post. <laughs> and
and everyone should condemn the New York Post. And to the New York Post, thank you for reminding me why we need a New York City public advocate. Councilman Levin, who represents the area. Thank you very much, Borough President Adams. Uh, and we are very saddened, all of us, to be here today. We are here because the New York Post, which has a circulation in the millions, today defamed a man, defamed a community, maliciously attacked a community and a family, a family that is in mourning, a community that is in mourning, and what they have done is out of pure greed, hatred, and disregard for human life. It has been done out of disregard for human decency. And it is all of our responsibility collectively as a city and as a society to say that we will not abide. We will not stand by and allow for a publication known for low standards, reviled for their low standards, to bully our community and to bully our city and to sully the name of victims and innocent people. And so I want to thank the borough president. I want to thank all of you for coming out collectively and immediately say that the New York Post must apologize to the family and to the community and to apologize uh, to everyone for what they have done here. They have done great damage out of malice and greed, and they need to get right. And so I want to, again, thank you all for being out here uh, on short notice. This is extremely important, um, but it is for the family and the loved ones of the victim that we are here. Thank you. Thank you. We want to hear um, from the community. And again, um, we are one Brooklyn, one borough, one Brooklyn. And that's why we're joining all the ethnic groups uh, that makes this great borough. Um, we feel the loss. Uh, no matter who we are, we all have a father. And so our hearts go out to those eight uh, children who now do not have a father. And, and we just want to keep this grounded that we have a fatherless household due to violence. Uh, and for those children to have read, slumlord found burnt in dumpster. That's, that has had to resonate through those children. And you know this is the highest level of irresponsibility. And that's why we're here in the numbers of that we are. But I want to hear from the community, the chair of community board, uh, 12 chair, uh, Yido Pearlstein. Good afternoon. There's not, there's not a lot to add. I think we heard it all, but I just wanted to add two quick points. Um, number one, as, we, as the borough president said a minute ago, slumlord found burnt in the dumpster. What amazes me that this uh, fellow gentleman who was brutally uh, killed, nor his family, did anything wrong to the New York Post. However, they're, they're saying about tenants, a gentleman an hour ago introduced me to like 25 of his tenants who are literally cry crying with tears, who are planning a vigil tonight, it bothers them more, and they're supposed to be the tenants of this person who's called a slumlord, they're crying while the post is writing this kind of stuff. So that's just amazing. 
Um, I also wanted to add what Councilman Greenfield said before about uh, we demand an apology of the New York Post front cover tomorrow. I would also ask the Post if they can use those seven to ten reporters to use the same energy and the same amount of time they did to find smear campaign on this guy to at least for the next two or three days use their tools to try to find whoever did this crime. And thank you again, Mr. Borough President and elected officials for coming out here. I don't think this has anything to do with a Jewish person killed or any, this is about humanity. This is about, like the Borough President said, this is about any New Yorker or any American. It's just an outrage. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And I, and I just want to make a footnote because you're, you're often uh, hearing about the good deeds. We don't have to justify the good deeds of the victim. We don't have to explain what he has done. We don't have to explain his act of charity. That is not significant. No one deserves to be kidnapped. No one deserves to be murdered. No one deserves to be burned. No one deserves to be dumped in a dumpster. And so if people are attempting to say what type of business person he was, in America, bad business people go to the judicial system, either housing court or the other courts. They don't go to the morgue. And that's it. So I don't want to have to justify murder. The people who took this life must be found and prosecuted to the full extent of American judicial system. That's why we're in America. And so we have a few more speakers. Uh, one of the chairs of uh, one of the organizations that is very knowledgeable of uh, what has been done over the years, um, um, of Chairman Minnie Hoffman. Thank you, Borough President. Not as a community leader, but a person that's involved in this holy organization, Boyne Oil, and I would like to say a few words on behalf of the organization. Boyne Oil, a nonprofit organization that helps out childless couples with infertility and genetic diseases. We are deeply saddened by the terrible loss of Mr. Menachem Stark, and we send our condolences to the family and friends and the community. Boyne Oilam is in total shock as we are preparing for our dinner, which is only a few weeks away, which Mr. Menachem Stark was one of our prestigious honorees for our upcoming dinner. Mr. Menachem Stark is somebody that is always connected and always here for the poor and for the needy, and this time he was here for the childless couple that suffered so much. What is a Boyne Oilam dinner? For those, who, for those of you who don't know, we are preparing for the largest gathering in the Williamsburg community, which gathers thousands of people where every year there's meetings upon meetings to decide who is the right person to be picked to be an honoree for our dinner. I would like to tell you an honoree for Boyne Oilam dinner does not mean that you wake up the day of the event, you prepare to be com coming up on the podium and taking the plaque in front of the, the audience and chairs go up. A dinner for Boyne Oilam and honoree for Boyne Oilam means that you work day and night to support the organization, coming up, coming up with lists of people that we could go after, trying to make and uh, arrange meetings in order this dinner should be a success because this organization, the help that we could help for these cop childless couples depend on those dinners. And when we had meetings in, our, in the offices, the name Menachem Stark came up as unanimously that he is the right person for this, event, this dinner. Why? Because he has a solid heart, a heart that goes out for every single person that is in need. He has a solid heart for every single organization that is in need. And so did he live, I know personally, his friends and family and his children. This is the life he lived. And being here today, no matter what we saw and what we say, what we need to say over here, there are people living here in our borough that are living a life on helping the needy, and unfortunately, we have to come to this conclusion. Why did Menachem accept it? Because this is the person he was. Unwillingly, we told him that he got to take upon himself this, this event. The whole community is mourning after losing such a good friend. 
in such a brutal way. In the name of Boyne Oilam, we'd like to say to the family, we are with you as one, as the borough president said, as one Brooklyn, one community, and one family, and we'll be with you throughout this process. And to Menachem, may you be rest in peace, we'll tell you, your presence will be missed at our future dinner, upcoming dinner. But what we will do, what you planted, what you started, we will continue, and we will do everything in your blessing memory. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Rabbi Hanina Sperlin from the Crown Heights community. Good afternoon. Everything was said, uh, we all heard it, tears in our eyes. But one thing I, I, I want to add, you know, every, everything really was said, you know, but I would like to add, you know, chutzpah is not the word, uh, really not the word. But the New York Post should be ashamed of themselves, what they did. And I would like to ask every store in every community, not only the Jewish community, they should take this thing and they shouldn't even sell it. The advertisement should go away. Apology is not the word when you have eight little children in a home crying with Tati. And what should they answer them? That they took the body to Long Island in the dumpster? So I just want to add, first of all, I want to thank the borough president, Eric Adams, and all the elected officials over here today for coming out and showing support, like they said before, the borough president opened up the house of the people, the borough of the people on a Sunday when it's usually closed for this a very important thing. And one last thing, really we should give a, 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 the borough president <laughs> And I would like to say that, you know, they uh, offered a $10,000 award. I want to add that the Crown Night Jewish community is going to add to that 10000 another $1,000. Dollars that will come eleven thousand. Uh, uh, we just we you have you see a, a large number of people here from Bed Stuy um, Volunteer Ambulance Corps. Is Rocky here? Yeah. Rocky, just say a few words, and we're going to open the floor up to questions. Good, Rocky. First of all, I want to give my condolences to the family, especially the kids. But I want you to know that the community, the whole community of New York City is behind you. And we will do whatever it takes to bring these perpetrators to justice. I'm gonna go one step forward, feeding off our advocate. The advertisement, you got to have money to advertise. What about us? Each individual never ever buy the New York Post again. That's the way to go. Because I tell you what, I ask my cadets, who are we? We're all family because there's one race, and that's the human race. So we need to all just come together. And when they violated that man, they violated all of us, and we're not going to take it anymore. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. 
Come on, Joel is a developer in Brooklyn, and we'll wrap it up with you, Joel. I can just say one thing. Um, as a real estate consultant and as an advisor, I have dealt with Menachem many times in the past with his partners and his office. This guy was an honorable, honest, integrity, and humble man. And I can say on behalf of all developers and all real estate owners in Brooklyn, this is a shame what the New York Post did. We demand an apology. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we, we just have one sub, uh, person that came that's a tenant, that actually was a tenant, and he wanted to make a few comments and we will close after that. As Mrs. Stark's tenant, um, I knew Mrs. Stark for a short amount of time, but I can say that uh, he was a great landlord uh, to me and to my fellow um, neighbors, and uh, he was just a great guy, always made me laugh, uh, always had a happy face on him, uh, and everything he did was by the book, uh, with me at least, everything was, was really great, straight, uh, always had a, a smile on his face, him and his brothers always visit the building, uh, and by me reading, yesterday what was said on the media, and today um, on the New York Post, it was just disgusting, and I really, really feel bad by, for his family, I live uh, in the area, uh, and it's, it's just really sad to see how the media uh, made Mr. Stark look, uh, he was actually a very decent man, uh, very happy, and uh, I'm glad that I got to meet him, and uh, I'm glad I'm his tenant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming out. Thank you, Thank you everyone, for coming out. Uh, we have one message in 2014, one Brooklyn. We're all in this together, one Brooklyn. Thank you very much. Thank you, John.